Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of The Show Raiders, episode 654 of The Show. I'm your host, Andrew. Hey, guys, and I'm Danny. And this is your source for tech, gaming, and entertainment news. And today we're going to talk about the first state of play of 2024. And Daniela, we're just going to jump right into it. How are you? How it, how, I was just so excited. There's, there's a lot of things that we saw here. I, I really, you know, some things were like, eh, but for the things that we were really excited about, Let's just jump right into it. But how are you first? And then we'll talk about it. Oh, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. Uh, it's it's nice for right now in Hawaii. till so this weekend, we got another cold front that's coming in. It's going to be windy. Definitely going to be rainy. And of course, Hawaii's cold. <laughs> not your cold. It's Hawaii's not my cold. cold. <laughs> so we're going to be in the low 60s, high 50s. Oh, my gosh. And freezing. <laughs> But no, um, it was great. And this is like, this is kind of why I like the whole surprise factor for it. Yes, I did watch this while I was at work. I was working, but I also had this up and I was so pumped that I didn't know anything like beforehand going into this. And I, I really, really loved it. Yeah, there were some games that were like, oh, okay, well, that's cool, but not my jam. But they had a lot of heavy be hitters, so... Like PlayStation came out swinging for their library like this year and going into next that I'm not disappointed. I loved it. No, I think what it was amazing. I think it was amazing. Uh, everything that we saw was, you know, we always talk about, oh, we want to see all the games. You want to see games. Don't do a lot of talking. Just give us games. Right. And when they do that, we're like, OK, you're giving us games, but there are things that we don't care for in the games and i think that's always going to be the case no matter what they show uh so but we we have a list here and i think the list is is pretty good you know i was surprised by a title here that you did not like so much we'll talk about that later but for the most part everything here we both agree that it's pretty dope okay so starting first with stellar blades so thoughts on that impressions reactions what do you think about that for the trailer, what they showed and how they were explaining the story, I think, like, I have, like, a hit and miss, love and hate for certain trailers where they give you, like, this whole storyline. But for Stellar Blade, it really worked for me. You know, learning about Eve and coming down and she's part of the 7th Airborne Squadron and, like, she's, she's sent down to Earth and then she loses the rest of her squadron where she meets Adam, which I thought was very interesting, you know, the whole Adam and Eve. Yes. You know, and, and Adam, he was somebody that was born on Earth and has, like, knows everything that's going on. And that entire process of how they were explaining the story along was showing the action, showing, you know, little cinematics here and there. And I got a little bit of, like, a Scarlet Nexus vibe from it. Um, just more of, like, the visual vibes and, like, the hack and slash that I really, really like. So I, I, I'm, st I'm stoked with that. That is definitely going to be added onto my watch list. Um... And the thing is, I think that's it's not going to be on my watch list too long because that's coming right around the corner. February yeah. 8th, I believe, is is the date. I'm like, wow, that's literally right around the corner. So don't have to wait too long. And that's also another great thing. Yeah, that's something that drives me insane that I, I don't think I've seen too much of from from whether it be PlayStation or or Xbox or Jeff Keighley and all of their announcements. I used, it used to drive me crazy seeing like, oh, they'll show you this amazing game coming two years later down the line. I'm like, how oh, come on, at least within a year. So lately, a lot of these shows have been, you know, putting out a lot of games are showing you games that are coming out within the next couple months to the next year. And that does that doesn't feel so far off. Like, I'm not going to forget about it. So this one, the fact that it's right, like a week, a week away now. <laughs> yeah that's that's fantastic yeah so i i really i really appreciate it for a couple of things side missions right main missions and deciding that if you wanted to do those things or not you know so we we love that the other thing too that really caught my attention by way of presentation like you said they they gave us a lot you know to really appreciate and i think because it's right around the corner they had to right it was a good decision to do that and then when i think about a game like this i think about bayonetta even though Bayonetta's uh, boss battles are a little bit more extreme, in my opinion, than this was. Uh, but it does have that kind of feel uh, for, you know, for that particular genre. But I really liked it. I really enjoyed what I saw for, for Stellar Blade. So um, all good, all good things there. A plus for me. Yeah, I, I, I can't wait to play it and get my hands on it. 
Yeah. Okay. So we're agree there. Okay. We're good. Yeah. We're one for one right now. Okay. Uh, next thing that, that we didn't see was, was Sonic and Shadow Generations. And I mean, I'm a big Sonic fan, so I have a very, very heavy bias when it comes to that. What did you think about Sonic? Okay. <laughs> all right. Did they say it all right there? Okay. I'm not anti-Sonic. Sonic is a huge part of my childhood. It has a lot of great nostalgia. But I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's internally, like, my taste in games is changing a little bit. I, that's cool. I can, I can live, like, I, I'm not, I feel like I'm not missing anything personally if I don't play it kind of thing, kind of vibe. Why do I feel nervous saying that? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's a safe space, you know? No. <laughs> it's a safe space between you and me. And then yeah. once this goes live to everybody else, they're like, what do you mean you don't like Sonic? Right. What does Sonic do to you? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> nothing, but I not on my playlist <laughs> right right there's that no it looks really good i mean my thing is like we're gonna see a sonic game in every single platform we're gonna see it you know whenever they're you know restructuring things whenever we're getting upgrades for different systems we're always going to see a sonic game so i'm not surprised by that you know for me it's like wow here we go again right because mm -hmm. sonic is forever so so that's how i feel about it and you know, I know that that's not everybody's cup of tea, you know, for, for some, there's a big thing between like Mario and Sonic, who's the bigger, you know, star, right? Who's the bigger mascot. And I think that's debatable, you know, depending on who you speak to when it comes to Sonic or Mario. So it is what oh, it is. For sure. For sure yeah. it is. Like I feel for as long as Mario's going to be around Sega, Sega, Sonic is going to be around. Um, I don't think that's ever going to go away i i can't picture it i mean even though the the shadow generations isn't really my cup of tea right now i cannot picture like no future iterations no future titles like that's he's always going to be around in the story 100 100 percent. so so we're good we're agree there okay next one this one's definitely for you in my opinion uh, until yeah. dawn remastered reactions on that what'd you think so i was thinking maybe like when they first initially started showing it i'm like i knew what it was but I was like, oh, is this another one? Is it continuing on? It was a remaster. It's a remaster and they're adding some new elements into it. And I loved Until Dawn. I still do. And so I'm really excited for this. In my mind, I'm thinking, is it really old enough to have a remaster? I mean, not that I care. I'm going to play this and I'm going to play it. But then, you know, somebody else reminded me on X over here that, you know, it's probably to pump it up that they are going to be having a movie. I'm like, oh, that's right. So this is a smart play. And I'm excited about it to get people to either play it again or play it for the first time and experience it leading up to it. Kind of like how they did for The Last of Us. So I'm like, yeah, that's right. And you know what? Either way, I'm not disappointed. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go and enjoy it again and fall in love with it all over again for all of the scares and how it's it kind of, you know, it, the way it's storytelling and it's interactive, which is it's funny because we're going to talk about Kojima later, but I'm going to reference back to this because that's like what I feel is pretty interactive because you have a lot of stuff that came out like Man, uh, Man of Madon that has that very, very similar elements to it. So I'm stoked. I have no problem. Like, I thought it was a fantastic game. Yeah, so it could be just me, right? Was Until Dawn a scary game? Um, yes. I would I would say it was a scary game. I wouldn't say it's like a horror game like like Silent Hill okay. or Resident Evil, but yeah, I would say it had the certain like maybe uh, maybe it'd be better described as a thriller. Okay. Cause I was thrown I, off. I think so because there's there's jump scare moments and there's really intense like heart racing moments. But I feel like it's like that in between horror and thriller, but I would put it more on the thriller side. Was it was it one of those games where there was like button timing? You have to press circle at, at a certain time or Sometimes. so you had you had Sometimes those time decision making factors. Right. How it affects the storyline. OK. All right. So, and this will be the first PC release, right? I believe so. OK. Yeah, because because I always thought that it was like, you know, it was surprising to me. When I was looking at it, I was like, okay, what genre is this? And I was like, it is it a scary game? Uh, like, you know, to me, it was kind of thrown off. Like when I was watching, I was like, oh, this is this is interesting. I remember seeing different things for Until Dawn, but I, n I never really, I guess, classified what genre it would be. And so to me, it was kind of, it threw me off a little bit. But in terms of, you know, remastering, looking amazing on screen, you know, you're going to get that. And one of the things that you said before, when it comes to, you know, the marketing for, for games, you know, PlayStation, 
has done well recently, right? And 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 I think that we both can agree that uh, this is this is a great play. And I didn't even realize that they were going to do a movie for Until Dawn. So thank you for for that bit of information. But I mean, it looks good. You know, I don't have anything you know negative there. I'll watch it from afar, <laughs> you know, because if it's any scary, you know, if it's any scary, I am not playing it. I'm just not. <laughs> OK, so, so that's that's where I draw the line. Uh, OK, so uh, anything else on that one? Uh, No, I just want to play it. OK, again. All right. Well, fair enough. Fair enough. Next thing we have is Silent Hill, which looks amazing. Any thoughts on that? Um, So you have you have. OK, so it's like a two parter. So they announced two different things for Silent Hill. They had the short message, which is free and available to play today, Um, which I thought that was like, wow, that's pretty damn cool. But it's in first person. So I'm a bit bummed about that one, but I, I feel like it definitely has like a, there's like an PT vibe to it. Definitely because of that first person aspect of it, the, the scare and how they're going down the hallways, the way that, just the way that they showed off that trailer. So I think, I don't know how long the, the game is. I'm sure that immediately once everybody found out that it was free to play, you could get it today. Um, I'm sure there's people that are, are streaming it right now. And um, I I feel like it can't be too long of a game, especially if it's free. <laughs> what do you think? Like, <laughs> what, 20 like, minutes? It, I'm sure it's still a very enjoyable experience. And then you have, um, you know, Silent Hill 2 being made for PS5 here, which looking at it, what they showed, see a couple little new puzzles in there. I don't know about the camera angles that they were going for, though, because it felt it felt a bit different. Again, I, it's been a long while since I played Silent um, Silent Hill 2, um, but it, it felt more like over the shoulder body cam kind of look rather than what it was before. But I have to go back and, and, and really look at it. But it's still Silent Hill. And I love horror games, so I got no problem with that either. So they had two really great announcements to come with that. And I know that's not your thing. <laughs> yeah, uh, but, you know, shout out to all the people who love it, right? And, I, and we're going to talk about it regardless. Even though, and what's interesting that even though it's not my thing, it always makes the list. I find that very funny, right? Um, so so the other thing, too, I wanted to, to mention as I was thinking about it, a lot of the games, or maybe it's just me, had the wish list now after the trailer was shown it's almost like hinting that a lot of these titles maybe not now maybe two years from now they're going to be on pc and we've seen that trend happen for playstation during the pandemic where a lot of the games that they've had in their in their catalog started making its way to pc we see god of war there uh, we see spider-man there we see miles morales there we see uh, Horizon there, right? So we're seeing a lot of titles go there. So so to me, it was almost like a preview without saying it really officially that some of these games, I wouldn't be surprised to see, you know, Stellar Blade make it to PC at some point. Uh, and what else we have? Of course, that Death Stranding is going to make it regardless. We know that, right? But I see a lot of the PlayStation titles uh, going to PC after release within two years, I would say. Yeah. That, that seems to be the marker. So so that wish list now, uh, I started seeing on the screen. I was like, hmm, is that, is that a... So I, I got to to add on to that, though. So I noticed for the games that didn't have dates, so they even give like, they didn't give a year or anything like that. So Silent Hill was one of them, I believe. And it just says in development for PS5. You know, I, I feel like that was their little easy way out. Like we can't give you a date. So we'll give you a wish list now. Right. <laughs> Option like here to remind you, like you'll be updated when we get this date. Um, so you don't forget about. It. Yeah. For and they'll sure. probably, you know, when you wish list something, it's automatically tied to your email somewhere, whether it be PlayStation, Xbox, or or Steam P PC over there, um, where they'll send you like you know email updates, something, whether it be for the game or just for their brand in general. Right. Building their email list <laughs> right right you gotta do that yeah I, I think it's it's a good move and it's easier for us to say hey we know we're waiting for this thing all right it gets here when it gets here yeah pretty much but i also feel like sometimes that is also a good way for them to get the initial gauge about the interest in it depending on how many people are going to be wish listing it so that way like later down the line if whatever they need additional funding they need whatever it is or like hey this is how many people 
I'm not I'm not just saying this for for um Konami. It's just for anybody like put a wish list, you know, wish list now. Um to show like there's people interested in our game. Please provide support, money, whatever it may be to have that those numbers back it up. No, no, I love that. No, that's definitely a great point. Uh so so next thing to me was a surprise. I don't know why. Death Stranding 2. I I don't know. It just felt like a surprise to me i don't know why maybe it's what i was seeing on screen i wasn't necessarily connecting it to death stranding uh, thoughts on that and let's talk about this i love hideo kojima's trailers for everything i know that there was some like complaints that his trailers are long i'm like or that trailer was long a death stranding 2 trailer was long which was like almost 10 minutes which is like a quarter of the whole 40 minute show but then again like Hideo Kojima has proven himself time and time again that he deserves this kind of treatment from whether it be platforms or studios or wherever it may be. He's a brilliant man. And um I I don't I don't think I was expecting a Death Stranding 2 trailer. I was really, really stoked on it. I think I was I knew something was gonna come from Hideo Kojima. I just didn't know exactly what or what I was hoping it was going to be. But this trailer, if I had to think back about the first time I saw Death Stranding 1, that trailer, and how confusing it was and how people were picking it apart, trying to piece these things together, trying to also understand Kojima-san and where his creative mind goes and everybody just brainstorming like, what is this game? What is this experience? What is he telling? And then putting it to this trailer, um, which Death Stranding 1 trailer was confusing. <laughs> but it was like it left you thinking and loving this process and just super curious about it and now when i see death running 2 trailer which i've watched three times he shows so much about what the story continue on for the first one um what sam is going to be doing what he's a part of you know you have the um the drawbridge there you have you have all of these all of these elements that are being thrown at you yet at the same time there's still a tad bit of confusion and still so much curiosity and questions, even though he presented so much in that trailer for you, which I'm not even mad about. I don't care about the UPS delivery 2.0. <laughs> I think it is definitely an experience to have that's wrapped up in this game that in a lot of ways, it is a video game. It is, you know, you have some action in there, you have the story, but it's like a whole, it's a whole experience from like the cinematics to the the landscapes that's created for you to the story to the music. It is a whole nine yards experience that happens. So I, I don't I care if anybody is hating on me for being Kojima-san fanboy over no, here. No, it's fine. But he, he's just, I just love the way that his mind works and what he presents and like, to to be free to do what he wants to create projects to create games that he wants to bring to life and it's just by his own rules which i feel like is is a huge part of his legacy is metal gear a part of his legacy yes it is it's a it's a very huge part but he's leaving so much more than that and i i just love that process and i would hope that every game developer gets to be at that point where they're just creating stuff that they love and they're passionate about and i think that really feeds and you can see that in the games he's creating yeah 100 percent. i i had no idea what i was watching but at the same time i enjoyed every single minute of it one of the things i did notice is that there weren't a lot of package delivery happening you know they really focused on talking about the weapons that you were going to have access to as if that was going to be more of the core experience instead of the package delivery that we got from the first game so i thought that was very interesting and and can we talk about the lady with the hands for the mask can we talk about that yeah. person <laughs> can we can we can we just break that up real quick because when i first saw that when i first saw that i was like how are you holding your hands like that like who does that who doesn't like this and then it just moves down here can we like, talk oh. about that was crazy. I thought it was funny. I thought it was great. And then the whole hand thing. I, I, I wanted, I was more intrigued by the puppet, the, the puppet hissing puppet. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> and now you get this little partner here that's going to be talking back and hissing at you. Um, no, I, but going on with Hideo's 
sense of humor, which he's he's brought into his games before. That sometimes doesn't make sense, but then you actually grow to love it. Um, I think it was the fight scene with the guitar, and it was like first it was a gun, and then it turns into a literal battle axe. Yeah, which guitars are known also as axes, and I'm like, hmm, I like your sense of humor there, Hideo. I do. Yeah, and it was I really dope. That maybe he likes the movie The Crow as well too. Mm. <laughs> Because, like, it's not like that was the first time you see it, but you have all the little watery eyeliner going on over here. <laughs> but, yeah, every element of that was super interesting about what's going to be, you know, this game, Death Stranding 2 on the beach, kind of a long title, but everybody's just going to call it Death Stranding 2. Yeah, but I don't think anybody cares, you know? It's yeah. like, it's Hideo Kojima, right? Mm -hmm. anything that he puts his hands to we're like in awe of the experience that we get from every single title that we play and enjoy and appreciate and even if you were just to take the cutscenes and just watch them it's like and he's always watching movies like on his uh twitter he's always talking about the things that he's watching or re-watching you know like his his mind is mostly made up of movies so oh. We know what we're going to get. We're going to get something incredible. And the fact that, you know, we're, talk we're going to talk, talk about more of what's coming from Hideo uh, later. But, you know, it is amazing to see, you know, him really enjoying the creative experience again. Because I know he has a podcast also where he talks about different things like that, where, like you were saying, enjoying that process and having the backing to put out the things that you love and the things that that you want to bring to the world so the world can enjoy it you know i, I think that's amazing uh you know after all that he has gone through and we're not even gonna go into that bag right uh to see you know how much you know how happy he is and you can see that on screen for the things that he's putting out i think that's pretty amazing so so shout outs to that you know shout outs to that so we have a couple of things uh and we'll begin wrapping up in a little bit okay so how did you feel about Dragon's Dogma 2? What did you think about that? You know what's fine, so interesting? I don't know what it is about my taste right now. I love Dragon's Dogma 1, the first one. I, I played it on PS3? 3? I want to say it was. Um, but I saw Dragon's Dogma 2, and I think when I remember it being originally announced, I'm like, oh, cool. Watching the trailer, I don't know what happened to the excitement. I don't know. <laughs> It doesn't feel like, like oh, it's that looks cool, but I don't know if it's a day one for me. Yeah, it doesn't feel like a, a continuation from the first one. I feel I disconnected just, from watching it. Yeah, that's kind of how I felt too. Like that looks really cool, but then you, when you tack on the title um, "Dragon's Dogma," I I don't know. Yeah, it felt okay, more. Like, it felt more like the guys who did Monster Hunter and said that if we kind of name it "Dragon Dog." I don't think anybody would know the difference, right? It feels like a Monster Hunter game. That's I'm what the trailer the gave lack me. Of experience was Monster Hunter games. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what it felt like to me. Like, and and I'm not a big Monster Hunter player, but like seeing a lot of that, you know, over the years, and then seeing this versus Dragon's Dogma One, I'm like, this feels like a Monster Hunter game, and I don't know why. I feel very disconnected from what the first experience was with dragon's dogma so that's how i felt about it maybe i'm completely wrong on that but i don't think i'm crazy though it's just i didn't feel connected to this experience at all i'm with you on that one so i gotta agree there we go we we, we agree we don't agree on the next thing but we agree on this one okay okay so so the next one that we have here rise of the ronin daniela i thought it was amazing right i thought it was amazing because it felt like sekiro you know die whatever a thousand times whatever the, the title was for for Sekiro it felt like that um it's it's one of those I, I don't know how you classify w what is this title is it what is this genre very tough bosses to beat um I, I want to say it's like a mixture like from watching it because I don't know what you would classify it as it's not really quite hack and slash because the fight sequences that they were showing were like calculated kind of timings that I felt that's what it was giving off. Right. So it kind of reminded me of Sekiro or Neo or some type of like right. of Tsushima right. vibe to it, but not not quite so Dark Soulsy. That's the what I was looking for. The Dark Souls, you know, one slash 
would take you out after spending 25 minutes on calculating every move of the boss and then you realize that you know they did one move you you missed it and then you're dead you know yeah i didn't i didn't get that vibe from it but I, like not that hard of a difficulty of a game right but at the same time that's the entire reason why i was not interested in it mm. Like I got it. I'm I am a hack and slash type of person. Like if you know me, you know if there's a block option, I almost never use it. Mm, <laughs> like okay. it's just not in me for whatever reason. I just want to button mash and get through this. I'm a hack and slash type of person. Not like, oh, he's defending this way, so I gotta block this way or be prepared. No, I just wanna like steamroll through it. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm that type of player. So for me, like visually, it was nice, but I just wasn't feeling the gameplay, the mechanics of it. I you didn't like the flying? Mm, no, not really. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I did it. I did it. I just it looked nice, but you got you know you got you know nineteenth century Japan here with like some Western vibes, and I don't know. I just I was very meh about it. I'm sorry. I just, I didn't. Like, it had some types of elements, too, where it was kind of um, very Assassin's Creed-ish. Like, there's one where he's kind of kind of sneaking through the bushes to the person that's up in the tire, whips them down to him, attacks him. Like, no. And I, I like Assassin's Creed, but Rise of the Ronin, I think, is just, it's just not for me. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. It looks, it looks amazing. I like everything that I saw there. I love the flying and the combat. Mm, I don't know because Sekiro was tough. It was a tough game uh, for me. So I don't like playing those experiences. I like tough when it's versus a player, you know, I was just thinking about this in real time, like PVP, a player takes me out. I could see him again and try to like, you know, take him next time. I like that difficulty, but for a game to be difficult just for the sake of being difficult, I don't think I've ever been a fan of that. You know, like when I think about Street Fighter, Dead or Alive, you know, games like that, you know, if the player is good and then I, I'm able to get a rematch, I like that difficulty versus, you know, the PC knowing every single move before I do it just by how I'm inching, you know, in front of them and stuff like that. I've never been a fan of that. So I, I just wanted to share that. OK, so Rise of the Ronin. I like it. I like what I'm seeing there, you know, and you're the resident PS5 person here. So you're going to play it first. If you play it, right? <laughs> and then no. I'll see it on PC. Maybe if it comes out on PS Plus and it's free, it's one of the free games for the month, sure, I'll add it to my <laughs> library of like, yeah, yeah, it's there because I'm claiming you for the free game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll see it on PC two years from now, okay? That's, that's the deal, okay? Okay, so next thing that we have is Sony announces next state of play. We'll focus on Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Uh, I know you're a fan of Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy VII, the original, was really the last um, big investment that I did for Final Fantasy. But uh, are you excited for the next state of play before we talk about our last topic? I am. I don't. I don't picture it being another forty minutes. Maybe like a twenty minute. If it, if they're only sticking and focusing on just Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, I see that as like a twenty twenty five minute showcase just for that, and I'm cool with that. I'm. I have no problem, but that is a very huge installment that's coming out. So I'm, I'm kind of happy that it's getting its own, you know, light, its own spot. It's not sharing it with anybody. So yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to be watching that. I'm going to be on it. We can talk about it then, but um, yeah, I'm pretty stoked. So that is February 6th, I believe. Also right around the corner. Also right around the corner. So there was a topic that I was going to put here. I'm not even going to talk about it here. There was a topic that I was going to put here. And Daniela said, you know what? Nah. I said, you know what? You're right. Okay, we're going to hold it. And I think we're going to spend a lot of time on that topic next podcast. So definitely look for that. But this topic that we have here before we close out, we have to talk about. Okay, because we have a legend here and Hideo Kojima who's given us so many dope experiences when it comes to Metal Gear, you know, from the Nintendo days to the PlayStation days and wherever you play it now uh, to Metal Gear 5 being the maybe swan song, if you want to say that, maybe. Uh, OK, but outside of that, you know, he is a legend. And the fact that we're getting another action game, espionage, 
that's going to be a slash movie experience okay it's going to be incredible so when you so so how do you how do we pronounce this daniela let's start there okay somebody needs to tell me how to pronounce this first of all naturally i have a lisp that i have to like work through having braces i have like another additional layer of a lisp added to that so saying this isn't isn't by I don't know. So, and you know what? And it's funny because, like, like we were, before we started recording, I was telling him, like, I only found out this, um, like, the name of this third installment that he will be working on, you know, through X. And I was going through this entire video section where he's going off of this. I'm like, does he say this word? Like, I need to hear him, anybody, either him or the other host, talk about this, say it, just say it one time so I know how to say it. And, I didn't miss it. I totally missed it on the whole panning out that it was on top of, you know, the, yep. the, the building sign there. But yeah, somebody please, please tell me because I swear somebody makes fun of me. Like I said, I said Kinwall wrong one time, one time, the very first time I ever said it. And is it, it I am still being made fun of it 13 years later. <laughs> so greatly appreciate if somebody tells me how to say this fizzent, fizzent. Yeah, I, I'm saying fizzent. I'm saying fizzent. I think it's a combination of physical and I think you said intelligence. And yeah, then, I did, I think. Right. You said intelligence, right? So I think it's a combination of those two things, but we'll see. You see, we could be wrong on that. But I think that it, it, what's interesting about this announcement is not having any idea of what's going to happen. Yes, we understand, you know, the Columbia Pictures thing, which is, you know, absolutely incredible by way of partnership and of course playstation and the backing that it gives with uh, to hideo kojima not knowing anything else we're like so excited because we know that he's going to deliver on an experience that we've never seen before especially if one of the things that was mentioned also was the new technologies that we're going to be able to offer you know hideo in this partnership you know the words were like very very intentional so yeah so what did you think about all that all right for, first i have to get this off my chest here like i said earlier i am a huge hideo kojima fan i'm gonna be super serious here my personality type i i don't like surprises like i mean i do but then when i'm teased with something it drives me crazy because i need to know i need to understand and i am going to be picking my brain and whoever is trying to like tease me with something, I can't do that with it, Hideo Kojima. So, sir, you are like, how do I put this? You are like the master teases. And it's going to drive me crazy because with Death Stranding, you put out this trailer, the first one, and nobody knew, and we were all picking our brains for it. And then at Game Awards, you announce OD, and I have, I still don't know what to make of that trailer. And then you announce no trailer, just a description. And I'm like, oh my lord, what is it that you're making? Because it sounds so good. First, you have like OD. Again, I was hoping that maybe he'll bring up something about that for this state of play, especially when you saw him and especially after they continue talking after Death Stranding 2. I was thinking that, okay, maybe he's going to give a little bit of it more of a trailer, a little bit more hints about what OD was, because I'm still lost and confused and very curious. And I would love to know more because you have all of these directors, actors, this huge cast working on OD. And then you go and announce something completely unexpected for a title. I can't say saying that you're going to be bringing, you know, very intentional. Again, how you were saying, you know, we're going to be giving you whatever technologies that you want, whatever we come up with, we're going to make it available to you. We're going to work side by side with you. And it's going to be a game, but an interactive movie, which makes me think of, you know, Until Dawn. But as fantastic and as much as I love games like that, when you add Kojima into that mix, you know, it's not going to be on that level. He's going to elevate it to like a 10. 100%. And it's going to be like this whole other experience. And that's what I think is so brilliant about his mind is he has a way of taking genres or video games or any type of medium and elevating it to this whole new other level that people are going to be like, why didn't we think about this? Our next game has to have these elements to it. 
Yeah, and like, that's you what know, like, he does. Like this yes. thing was just like this, and that's how he is. He's a secret with all of his things, and he hides it. But he like gives you like these little tidbits, or like, what is this experience going to be? Because I know that if you say that it's going to transcend film and games, I know he's going to do that. It's not going to sh fall short. I think like there's a lot of games that announce and they promise these big things. And then when you get it, it doesn't meet those expectations. Um, but I believe when Hideo Kojima says that it's true and it's fact. So he has, you know, he, we, we mentioned, and if you follow him on an X and anywhere else, he loves music. He loves movies. He loves books. He's always talking about those things. He's always sharing what he loves and where he gets his ideas from or what inspired him. And he brings those elements into these projects that he's making so that you can experience it with him. And I'm just like, what can this be? Because you have my interest on like a level 12 here. And I don't know if I can wait for it. I mean, I'm going to have to. You're going to have to. Yeah. I'm going to have to. And I, I think it, it's going to be something pretty big because, you know, he mentions that he, um, he's been in this game and he's going back to his roots of this action espionage um, over 30 years now. And in two years, he makes his 40th anniversary for, you know, his entire career, which gives me a good idea. Like, all right, so we can expect maybe a trailer, maybe a whole lot more idea of what this Fison is going to be in in that two year mark for him, or 40 year mark for him. Um, because I believe he said that they're not going to fully start working on it in full swing until after Death Stranding. But then he also has OD going on as well, too. So I know it's going to be a, a quite a bit of a wait, but the thing is, he has two projects coming out that is going to fill those slots until, you know, this magic of transcending film and games comes to us. So yeah, I'm, I'm done fanboying. No, it's so good. It's so good. We have so much to look forward to when it comes to Hideo Kojima. And I think that even at the top of the year, you know, in the last episode, we talked about Power World, how that was a surprise uh, hit. And... I think that, you know, we're still at the top of the year. We're going to see a lot of good things come out this year. That's that's what I'm speaking, you know, that we're going to have fun. We're going to enjoy the games on all the platforms. We're going to see more stuff that's going to be cross play for us to, you know, enjoy games together. So I'm looking forward to the things that are coming out. I don't know, this state of play, I went in with no expectations. I had no idea, right, what they were going to even hint or talk about. And I'm glad I did that because we're able to to really enjoy, you know, a lot of things that we saw. So uh, I'm I'm all in, you know, I'm all in, of course, with Hideo Kojima, anything that he has coming out. Uh, there's a Metal Gear game that's being either remade or something. This is a Metal Gear game that's supposed to be coming out, you know, very, very soon. So I wouldn't be surprised if that leads, you know, into anything that he has coming out by way of marketing and, and stuff like that. So we'll see. We'll see how that plays out. Uh, but any final thoughts on, on the show? Uh, if you were to grade it, if we're still doing that, like, what do you think overall? Well, just, just to finish off, like the ending part of the interview with um, Hideo Kojima, um, when he leans over and he like waves by and like probably the one guy's job is to have that perfect drone pan out shot. You know what? When we, when, when we see these announcements, I never think about it being in an actual movie studio yeah i don't know why yeah like my first thought is like is in a giant green screen room in a studio at sony not even sony movies just playstation yeah the off the office yeah yeah that's what i that's what i think of but then when they did that pan out and then you see columbia pictures i was like oh that actually makes more sense but then you think of i was like wait again these little hints these little clues at hideo leaves out i mean you have sony pictures here but then you also have columbia pictures like who's collaborating and what is right. happening who has their hands in the kojima pot for sure 100 percent. So, no it's exciting as far, as far as grading it um there were some hits and misses but there was a whole lot more hits i liked it i don't i don't know if i feel right grading it because Xbox Xbox had their showcase granted they only showed five games but they were they were pretty good seller games as well too versus 
uh, Sony, who I, I think it was 14 or 15 games all together. I think they all got the right amount of time that they deserved. Um, but I, I can't be disappointed. And like we often say, like when it comes to video games and what these studios are putting out and what is happening, we, we don't lose. It's a win win. So I'm not going to say I'm a, I'm a Sony like I, I think early on, like several years ago, it was very clear that I was like a huge Sony fan and not so much an Xbox. And granted, over time, as things developing and games come out and, you know, different things happen, those opinions can change. And I'm like, I'm pretty even on both. There's certain things that I, I feel that Sony could do better on their subscription services, but then I love the games that are primarily on there, what they showcase. And even though the games that they did announce, it is going to be on PC, it is going to be on Xbox, not all of them, but a good portion of them are going to be. I like that they just chose to like, hey, we'll get the star and we'll get, a, we'll get to announce this um, version, even though it's not like a PlayStation exclusive. So I can't say like one is better or if I, I super, super love this one over Xbox and what they had to announce, but I really did enjoy it. Okay, uh, that's fair. So we won't grade it. I enjoyed it as well. And and we're going to end there. So Daniela, where can they find you? You can find me on all the socials at Miss DJM. And Andrew, where can they find you? You can find me at Uriah, U-R-I-Y-Y-A. And great show, PlayStation. And thanks for watching. Bye, guys.